Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter and today we're gonna deal with some drama that's been going on here on the channel and really all over the internet. So here's the scoop. I did a video entitled, Why People Are Wrong About the Canon EOS R. And if you haven't seen it already, I would recommend starting there because we're going to be addressing a lot of people's responses to what I said in that video. And I first wanna start by saying, I stand by everything I said in that video. I watched it multiple times over after comments and certain people on certain sites saying certain things about it. And I totally agree with myself. It's exactly my thoughts and my opinions. And I wanna clarify that the title of that video is why people are wrong about the EOS R, not why I think everyone is wrong about everything on the EOS R. A lot of people online are pretty much saying this camera is complete trash. There is zero merit to it whatsoever. And I disagree with that. Now don't get me wrong, the list of merits for this camera is a short one, but there is a list nonetheless. I do think there are certain people where this camera would be a good solution for them. And that's my honest opinion, right? This is what we do on the internet. We share opinions. Now we're going to get to a bunch of concerns and some of the big ones that people had with me and kind of the whole industry really. And that is that a lot of people, especially a very certain salty blogger, have been saying that Canon wined and dined a lot of us and that essentially because of that event and what Canon did for us, we all feel obligated to have a positive review and try to say good things about the ESR. And some would even take it a step further in saying that Canon paid us and made a big deal about you guys need to do positive reviews. So I wanna clear some of that stuff up. Number one, Canon didn't pay any of us. They never said one time with this event, we'd like you to X, Y, Z. All Canon ever communicated to us, or at least to me, was would you like to attend this event? We will fly you out. Yes or no. Does that mean we should just completely forget about ethics and what we feel about various cameras because of that? Absolutely not. I started DSLR Video Shooter eight years ago from nothing. Had no help from anybody. I didn't go out and find any big influencers to help give me any boost. Nothing like that. Just creating content, sharing information, helping other shooters is why I started the site. So after eight years of building this community and this whole thing, DSLR Video Shooter, here on YouTube, do you think I'd throw all of that away for a trip and a couple drinks? And keep in mind, this was not a free vacation as a lot of people called it. We weren't lying on the beach for five days, guys. Now, a lot of you might be thinking at this point, well, with all that said, why are you still being so soft on Canon and this camera. Well, first of all, I don't think I'm being soft on them at all. And remember, that was just my initial thoughts and dealing with the anger of the internet with the release of this camera. That was not a full review. We will be getting to that. And guys, if this camera sucks, it's gonna come out when we put it up against the A7 III, the GH5 and GH5S. And I'm not the type of guy to get all kinds of red and angry and start screaming at the camera when I don't like specs of something. You guys hopefully have seen that enough by watching my channel. I like to remain calm and look at things from a factual standpoint and form an opinion off of what I'm seeing and how I'm using something. So I'm not just gonna throw everything out the window and just flip out because there isn't a certain spec in place in a camera. I wanna fully test things and that's what we're gonna do up here on the channel. So yes, like you guys, I know this camera is hardly perfect. We went through just a few of the really bad things about the new ESR in that video and I walked you through what I'm thinking is going on and why Canon isn't giving this stuff to us. And many people, again, a certain blogger, were hearing my video and getting things a little mixed up. Because I wasn't raging and just trashing Canon and the camera, that in turn meant to these people that I was saying that the EOS R is better than the A7 III, the GH5, the GH5S. I'm not saying that at all. I have tons of experience with those cameras. I use them every single day here in the studio. And at no point in the video did I say anything like that. Also, throughout multiple points in the video, I recommended those other cameras to people since there's some serious problems 
with the ESR. And again, at no point in the video did I ever say you should get the ESR over any camera if you watch the whole video. So those have been just some facts, some opinions on the camera itself. And do keep in mind, this is just me. I'm not speaking for anyone else who's at the Canon event. I have no idea what deals or no deals were struck by anyone else, but I wanted to address this and help people navigate what's actually going on here. There are two other housekeeping things I want to address when it came to that previous video on the EOS R. Number one, a lot of people were talking about the focus when I switched from the GH5S to using the EOS R. Essentially, I was using my Sigma 18 to 35, and a lot of you were super helpful in the comments, and it sounds like there's a lot of issues between certain Sigma lenses and the Canon bodies. So I'm going to have to figure that out and maybe use a different lens for my comparisons down the road. So for those who gave me some help there, really appreciate it. Uh, had no idea that was going to be a problem when I shot the video. Thing number two, a lot of people, and rightfully so, said I should have added a whole bunch of other features to the GH5S when I was comparing the two cameras. And you're completely right. In the video, I kind of did a side-by-side -side talking about the similarities between the GH5S and the EOS R, how they have similar things missing and things included, but that the EOS R had that one thing that the GH5S does not have, and that is dual pixel autofocus. I should have continued that list and shown the massive amount of features that the GH5S has that the EOS R does not, or at least mention something like that. So you guys are completely right and uh, that should have been in the video. So this week I am doing side-by-sides between the EOS R and multiple other cameras. Stay tuned for that. I'm really excited to dive in and pixel peep and see what's going on with what I can compare because a lot of these cameras have features that the EOS R do not have. Also, if for whatever crazy reason you're not tired of hearing about this camera or specs and things like that, I did a live stream recently with Armando and Dave from Kinotika and Motobytes. So I'll link to that somewhere if you wanna hear more drama and talk about that camera and just kind of filmmaking and YouTube and gear in general. So let's get back to business as usual Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in our next video.